Okay, uh, the easiest way to solve this problem is we need to find a linear equation between the, that has these two points in there. So the easiest way to solve this problem is what we like to call the, uh, the point-slope form. So if you don't remember point-slope form, point-slope form is this, x2 minus, I'm sorry, y2 minus y1 equals m times x2 minus x1. All right? Now you might be confused on this and like, whoa, 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 what is this x2 and y1 and x, y, whatever? Well, remember we have two coordinate points, right? And remember, coordinate point is how we graph. Where x tells us how far to move left or right on the, um, to plot our point, and y tells us how far to move up or down. And that's on, you know, a coordinate axis. So, coordinate grid. Well, we need some way to differentiate between our x values. We have an x and we have another x. So, I want to distinguish between the two of them. I don't, when I say what is x, some people might say it's negative 7. Some people might say it's negative 3. And they're both right, right? However, if I say what is x1, your only answer is negative 7. And if I say what is x2, the only answer you should respond with is it's a negative 3. So it's just a way to label our x's. And I'm going to do the same thing with y1 and y2. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug them in. And if remember, m is our slope. So if I plug these two points in, what I can do is I can figure out what the slope is. And now remember, a linear equation can be written in the form of y equals mx plus b, where m is our slope and b is our y-intercept. Now, um, I'm going to show you how to solve this problem by using a y-intercept method. But first, I think it would be a lot easier to show you how to solve it with point-slope form. So what I can do is now, if you can understand that you have two x's and two y's, I'm going to plug in those two x's and y's into this equation. So therefore, I have a negative 8 minus a negative 1 equals m times negative 3 minus a negative 7. Then what I can do is I can simplify this. Negative 8 minus a negative 1 is going to give me a... Come to the main office. Hiya, Peyton, please come to the main office. Negative 3 minus these double negatives gives me a, uh, this is going to give me a positive 4. All right. Then what I can do is now I can divide by 4. So therefore I have m equals a negative, negative 7 fourths. Okay. So therefore my equation right now I have y equals a negative 7 fourths x plus b. Now, I don't know what my y-intercept is right now, right? I only have what my, um, my slope is. Well, what we can do now is we can use this exact same equation again, but now what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to plug in one of my plug in one of my points. So what I'm going to do is instead of using both my points, if you notice, an equation on a line has a y and an x, right? Those are open, right? Those are open to plugging in values. So I'm going to rewrite this equation. I'm going to do the same one. But now I'm only going to pick one point to plug in. And it's usually helpful, just trust me on this one, to pick y1. Okay, y1 and x1, to pick your, pick your first point. So y2 minus y1, which was a negative 1, equals m times x2, which is not x squared, minus x1, which was a negative 7. I can rewrite this as y base two, y of two plus one equals m times x two plus seven. All right. Then now what I have to do is do is my distributive prop. Um, oh, and what is our m? I'm getting retarded. Our m is a negative seven fourths, right? So we got to write that in for m. Okay, so now I have to use my distributive property. So I have y2 plus 1 equals a negative 7 fourths x2 plus um, a negative 7, negative 7 fourths times 7, which is going to give me a negative 49 over 4. Okay, Whew. it's getting a little confusing. Well, again, I'll subtract my 1, and I get y2 equals a negative 7 fourths x squared 
And instead of a plus and negative, I'm just going to subtract a 49 over 4. And then, guys, we don't need to write, you know, minus 1. You could write minus 1, but we need to simplify this, right? So instead of writing minus 1, I'm going to say minus 4 over 4. Because that's exactly what negative 1 is. You can rewrite it as negative 4 over 4. Now, since these have the same bases, I can do negative 49, negative 49 minus a negative 4, which would be a negative 53. Okay? Now, here's where it's a little confusing. People say, well, but you have y2s and x2s here, and it's only supposed to be y's and x's. Remember, the only reason why I was using those y2 and x2s was to help me differentiate what points I'm using. However, these are arbitrary points, okay? Um, meaning, really, for, this vat, for you plugging them into this formula, we only use them to distinguish between the two points. So now that I've plugged in my y, or plugged in my one point plus my slope, I don't need to use these points anymore. These can, this equation equals both of those points. Um, I can now plug in any x and y, and that will make this equation true. So um, to find this out using your x, to find a linear equation between these two points using point-slope form, there you go.